Hello and welcome back. Today I'd like to talk about another rock type and this is really for my master's class. I promised to show them a pick right, a pick right basalt or pick row basalt, um, a basalt with loads of olive in it. And uh, this is what this is. Here we have a boulder of uh, pick right and you see immediately it's rich in olive in. And uh, here's some larger olive in aggregates here as well here as well then there's some smaller olivins for example here and here and there's some pyroxene here and here for example in addition the ground mass is made of very fine grained olivin pyroxene and some plagioclase and um, there are some sparse iron titanium oxides in the ground mass as well that's the main minerals in there and uh, a picro basalt is an olivin rich basalt usually up to about 50 percent of the rock may be olivin and um, in terms of chemistry people say everything above 18 percent mgo would make a pick right so uh, we have an ocean an oceanic uh, pick right here and indeed in the old days uh, people like lacroix called this type of rock oceanite when it occurred on places like Réunion, Hawaii or the Canary Islands. And that's indeed where we find them rather frequently. They come up in hotspot type ocean island settings. And uh, here this particular sample is from La Palma in the Canary Islands. This is from the Tabuyente Shield. This is about um, two to one and a half million years old, the Tabuyente Shield. And this is from the central Tabuyente National Park, this particular sample. The uh, pick rights, as I said, can be frequent on ocean islands and uh, they're particularly magnesium rich. And the large olivine concentration comes usually from some sort of physical process. This could be either fractional crystallization and a lot of olivine accumulates in this rock or alternatively, it could be from this integration of, for example, mantle xenolith that were carried up by these lavas. And uh, then by peculiar circumstances, we get a large concentration. It is not necessarily that these crystals have all crystallized in this basalt. They have physically been aggregated into it. By this <clears throat> aggregation of larger mantle xenolith, for instance, or by accumulation of crystals. In fact, it was already noted by Darwin on his Beagle Voyager when he wrote about ocean islands that uh, some basalts have concentrations of olivin at their base. And he inferred, quite rightly, I believe, that uh, crystals, particularly olivin, that is more dense than its surrounding liquid, will sink to the bottom of a liquid body and there they will accumulate. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit to allow you a view. And now you can probably appreciate the smaller pyroxenes that are mainly um, in the ground mass. Some slightly larger ones occur, but the olivins are a lot larger. Some of the olivins here seem to be aggregates rather than individual crystals. And um, therefore, I believe that in this particular sample, there might well be disaggregated mantle xenolith that could have contributed the olivins. This area here looks certainly like a number of crystals that have grown together, and so does this area here. This does not preclude that some of the crystals have grown in this rock. The pyroxene may also have grown in this rock. So there could be multiple populations. This is not uncommon for pickrites. Pickrites in several places that uh, have been studied show that multiple olivine populations are quite normal in those. It's hard to explain the rich olivine content of these rocks otherwise. So, 
I like to close my little introduction to Picro Basalt and say goodbye particularly to our specimen here from La Palma and uh, I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thanks for watching and I hope we'll see each other again very soon. Bye bye.